In this Adobe After Effects tutorial, we'll be learning to add 3D Pokemon models into our scene in a very simple and easy way. In this tutorial, we won't be using any third party plugins and we'll be doing everything inside After Effects. So, I already have a video in my project. Let me drag this towards this panel here so that a composition is created. Also, it is important to go to the composition settings and from 3D renderer, make sure you change this to advanced 3D instead of classic 3D. So, the latest version of Adobe After Effects 2024.5 supports the advanced 3D, which allows you to add 3D models into your scene. Let me play this video. You can see that there is this empty street, and we'll be adding a couple of Pokemons, Pikachu and Charmander in this footage. We'll have to track the footage and establish a 3D camera. To do that, go to the FX and Presets panel. If you don't find the FX and Presets panel, go to Window and ensure that FX and Presets is checked. So from this panel, I'll type in 3D camera. You can see that we have this 3D camera tracker, and I'll drag this onto the footage. Once you do that, Adobe After Effects will start analyzing the scene and will prepare tracking markers and then Adobe After Effects will start solving the camera and gives us these tracking points. Let me scrub forward a little. Now you can see that we have this three markers here. I'll right click and then click on create shadow catcher, camera and light. Once you do that, all these three elements have been added. And now we can add the 3D models into our project. I downloaded this Pikachu 3D model from Sketchfab. You can download this from the link in the description. You can also notice that there is a walking pose of Pikachu. This is basically a little low poly model. And the other model that I used is Charmander. So I use this inside my project. Let me import it into my project. Whenever you're downloading these 3D models, make sure to click on this download 3D model and download this GLB format so that it would be imported with the textures. So I have Tamander and Pikachu 3D models in my project and I can add them into a composition. Before doing that, let me show you what this shadow catcher is. So I'll scale the shadow catcher a bit something like this so that it covers the entire floor all right and in order to see what is happening clearly i'll expand the material options and i'll check this button so that it will accept the shadows the next thing is i'll add the pikachu and charmander so i'll drag the pikachu 3d model into the scene something like this a dialog box opens up and make sure you click on this make comp size and then hit OK. You can see that the 3D model has been added into the scene. However, you might get into a situation if you don't see the 3D models inside your scene. Make sure you change the renderer from classic 3D to advanced 3D. So this is important. So check this advanced 3D button and you'll be able to see your 3D model. Now select the shadow catcher, copy the position parameters by hitting ctrl c on your keyboard and expand the position property of the pikachu 3d model and paste it there you can see that it is now added onto the top of the shadow catcher and let me scale this something to this size the next thing is to add the lighting when we created this 3d scene we also created a light so i'll double click on this light and a dialog box opens up I'll change the light type from point to environment. The latest version of Adobe After Effects supports HDRI lighting. That means we can use HDRI images as light source. This is an advanced version of lighting your scene. So I went into this website called Polyhaven and I downloaded this rural asphalt road, which actually matches the lighting of our scene. You'll have to select the one that matches your scene so in this case you can notice that if i browse different hdris there are different types of lightings in this case you can see that it is overcast and here you can see that it is a sunny hdri it all depends on how your scene is you'll have to download the one that suits your scene 
and it is absolutely free so you can download the hd version of hdri and import it into your project so i have this hdri and i'll drag this onto my scene once you do that you can see that it has been added and i'll change the light source from default to the hdr that we have you can see that it is currently rendering and there you go you can see that the lighting has been used now from the transform options that you have here you can move the light and you can notice how the shadow is moving you'll have to match the scene in such a way that the shadows align properly with what the scene has so in this case there are buildings and the shadow is towards the left so we'll make sure that the shadow is inclined something like this I'll also increase the intensity of the light just a bit, something like this. The next thing is to change the shadow catcher material option to accept shadows only. Now, once you enable this accept shadows only, the solid will disappear and you can only see the shadows. And if I start playing the video, you can see that the Pikachu is actually stable and it is not moving. However, we downloaded the animated version of Pikachu. To fix that, I'll expand the Pikachu model here and I'll expand the animation options and we have all the different animations that are integrated within the scene. So I'll simply change this to jump. You can see that this is how the Pikachu starts jumping. Let me set this to quarter because the render takes a little time. You can see that Pikachu is starting to jump something like this. However, this is only close to one second. To fix that, I'll right click on this 3D model and from time, I'll enable time remapping and I'll hold Alt key on my keyboard and click on this timer button here so that an expression editor opens up and I'll simply add a property called loop out duration. Once you do that, you have the option of expanding it and by doing this, Gachu will continuously start jumping in the scene, something like this. It would continuously start jumping until the scene ends. You can also add a light source, a point light, just so that you have a little lighting on Pikachu. You can adjust the intensity just a bit so that the object looks a little better. If I toggle, you can clearly see the lighting difference. This is with the light and this is without the light. After doing this, you can also change the animation options. I'll change this from jump to walking. You can see that Pikachu will continuously walk at the same place. In order to fix that, I'll right click on the 3D model and from time, I'll enable time remapping and I'll hold Alt key on my keyboard and click on this timer button here so that we'll have the expression editor open up. And I'll add an expression called loop out duration. Once that is done, we can increase the duration of the animation. However, you can notice that Pikachu has been walking at the same place. To fix this, I'll hit P on the keyboard and click on timer button here. Make sure you're at the first frame. Go a few more frames forward and bring this y axis value in such a way that. It will look as if it is warm. So let me give you a couple of tips here. If you notice that the shadows are not proper or if the render is not looking clear, go to renderer options and change the renderer quality. Also change the resolution to full or double. Usually it will be half. So I'll change this to double and also ensure to click on this fit to scene so that the shadows appear properly. And then hit OK. All right. In the same way, you can also add the Charmander 3D model and then render the video. These are the basics of how you add a 3D model into your scene. I hope you found this video helpful. And if that's the case, give us a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel. And see you guys next time with another tutorial.